Hello there, and welcome to my workshop. This is the beginning of our new project, and I thought I'd change it up a little bit and pick a project that we could do in one episode. So we're going to be completing this project from start to finish on this show. Now, what is a Pisanki egg tote? Well, let's start with the egg. Check this out. Look at this beautifully decorated egg. Look at the color and the pattern. It's just beautiful. This is a Ukrainian tradition that goes back many, many, many centuries. And they have just taken the art and craft of decorating eggs to a whole new level. They call these eggs pisanki. And they're just absolutely beautiful. We like handmade things all around our shop and all around our house. But this is really special to me because this was made by my sister Nina. Pisanki is her hobby and she's been doing this since she was a teenager. And I think she just does amazing work. So I thought it would be fun to travel to Massachusetts where she lives and uh, have her explain how she makes these and show us some other examples of her Pisanki eggs. So we're going to be paying a visit to her. I'm going to be putting this away so I don't break it. And I want to make a special handmade gift for her that I'll surprise her with. And uh, here it is. This is a cardboard mock-up of what I'm going to make. It's basically a shallow box. It's got some dividers here. And then it has a handle on the top. There we go. And that makes it a tote. And I think that'll make a nice gift. I made this handle in a blacksmith class that Jonine and I took a few years ago. Very rustic in appearance, but I think it's going to be perfect for this project. And in keeping with the rustic nature of my hardware, I'm going to be using recycled or reclaimed lumber. And here is a beautiful piece of chestnut. This is American chestnut. And years ago, they had many, many, many thousands of acres of chestnut all around this region, and it was a major source of lumber. But in 1904, a blight came through this area, and a disease infected almost all the chestnut trees, and within a few decades wiped out almost all the trees in this area. So they have never fully recovered, and if you want chestnut, the best way to find it is by reclaiming it from old buildings when they take those buildings down. So uh, I think that's a, a nice piece of chestnut here. I've got other pieces as well here in my house. Here's an example. See this right here? It's a piece of chestnut. I've got my clock attached to it. Beautiful patina. And all I really did was cut it to size, and I think I put a little linseed oil on it just to darken it up a little bit, but just beautiful. So I think this is going to be uh, great for my project. And I'm also going to be using for lumber some of the thinner pieces, like the dividers. These boards, this board came from a repair in our attic. And this is original to our home, which was built in 1872. So this goes back a few years, and I'm going to be using this as well. And I'm not sure what species this is. Looks like it might be poplar. But I think when I plane this down, I have a better idea of what it's made out of. So um, those are the materials that I'm going to be using. And uh, it's going to be very simple construction. It's going to be butt joints, nails, glue, and uh, very simple that way. I'm going to spare you my usual blah, 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 <laughs> and just go ahead and make this thing. It's very simple construction. It's self-explanatory. And as uh, you watch the video, you'll see exactly how this all goes together. So uh, let's start. I'm going to rip this lengthwise, and we'll go from there. Got my saw bench ready to go. And if you are ready, Jonine, mm -hmm. are we sure? <laughs> okay. We are. Here we go.
That was a surprise. <laughs> I'm out of breath. And uh, I lucked out. So, uh, whew. Oh, that's a lot of ripping. Well, we took a short break and uh, gave me a chance to catch my breath and a chance for Jonine to stop laughing at me. Did I tell you that chestnut splits very easily? Yes, it does. And I think you could see that uh, as I was sawing, it split, but fortunately it split right along my cut line. So no harm done. What I'm going to do now, because I've got enough here on this board for one side and one end, I'm going to cross cut it. And that'll minimize the amount of material I have to remove to get any twist and get these boards nice and flat. And then I'll thickness plane the other side to the thickness we need. So first things first, I'm going to cut this.
Well, what do you think? Am I close enough to the camera? Can you yeah, see this? Good. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? Look at this thing. Now, it took me longer than I thought to put it all together and make this. Boy, it was a uh, fight to the finish, but I think it looks great. I'm really happy with it. Now, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. We've got a six-hour trip to Massachusetts. So I'm going to splash some Danish oil on this real quick. It's going to have to dry in the car. It's six hours away, so it'll be dry when we get there. But uh, that's the next step. So uh, next time we talk to you, it's going to be up in Massachusetts. See you there. And we're here in Massachusetts. I'm with my sister Nina. Hi, Nina. Hi, Ken. Thanks for having us over here. Sure, anytime. Looks like you've got quite a spread here of things. You've got uh, the eggs to show us. You're going to show us a little bit about how you make them. And uh, um, my first question is, how did you get started? What, what got you interested in this in the first place? I guess I was in junior high and I signed up for, my friend and I signed up for one of those uh, YMCA courses and so this guy from Russia came and he brought all his stuff and, and he showed us how to do it and we showed up and it was all uh, senior citizens and me and my friend, we were mm -hmm. both 14 and uh, I enjoyed it so much I asked him for uh, the, you know, to buy a kit and so he sold me all of the dyes and uh -huh. the, uh, the equipment so I started doing it at that point. Wow, and you've got quite a collection here. How many do you think you've made in uh, in all this time? I would say I, I would say many, many hundreds. Many, many hundreds. Yeah, because it's been I've been making them since I was fourteen. These are just amazing. Did you get some close shots of that? It's just incredible the detail on these. I mean, I am just blown away. So sometimes I make them with brown eggs, which is mm -hmm. um, very common in New England. You know, the chickens lay brown eggs. And so they have a different, more antique look. And, and then the other ones are, are white. Now, are there different styles? I mean, I see different looks here. Are there like traditional or more traditional and some are more contemporary and that kind of thing? That That's true. There's only so many ways you can divide an egg. and. And so these um, Ukrainian star shapes are very common. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a six point and an eight point, and um, the, all of you'll see that this star is is a theme in many, many, many of the eggs, uh, because it just sort of naturally, uh, you know, divides that way on the, on an egg. Sure. And so I do the same designs a lot over and over, different forms of them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's why they sort of look that way. The uh, all of these Ukrainian um, eggs, they have symbols which have meaning, but I just sort of make designs. I see. Now, um, you've shown us some of these eggs. What's the first step? What's the process in making these? Walk me through the, uh, the, the process. The, the basic idea is that you take beeswax mm -hmm. and use a tool to, to, to make the design on the egg. And what it does is it protects the color that you put over top. So uh, when I draw on this with beeswax, it'll stick on the egg uh -huh. and it will cover the, the designs that I want white because the egg okay. is now white. And then successive baths of dye will, I would go to yellow uh -huh. and then it would protect the white areas and then I would draw whatever I wanted yellow with the, with the wax. 
How many layers do you wind up doing when it's all done? It does know? vary, yeah. but um, I would say, you know, five or six different colors that you could, you know, have like all oh, these yeah. dye okay. baths. And uh, you usually start with the light colors uh -huh. and then you build. And, you know, there's trickiness. So you get to red, you then you need to go to, you have to rinse it off and then okay. go to green. And so it becomes a, um, uh, the dye baths end up being a, an, an issue. You can do different color yeah. sequences and things like that. Well, can you show me a little bit about how you apply this wax? This is pretty amazing. Sure. Beeswax lo uh, melts at a very low temperature, uh -huh. so it's sticky. Okay. And so it will stay on the egg without cracking. And uh, in the old days, they had the, this tool where you just lash, um, you know, lash a, a piece of metal like this and the the wax goes in there and uh -huh. then drips out the end kind of like a fountain pen okay but fortunately you know some nice engineer came up with the today's version of the kistka which is a, a brass cup that you put the wax in and i'll show you how that works okay you heat it up all right and it's cold right now so it'll take a, a second and we're breathing on the candle but it will it will heat up and we'll fill the reservoir with some beeswax. It's a cake of solid beeswax. And it's warming up now. And then it will slowly drip out of the bottom. And I uh, use this little plate here to make sure I have it. And I'm not making blops on the eggs that dry off the back. And then I can apply it to the to the egg like so. And so you have to hit back to the candle to keep that going, that heat mm -hmm. going, and make sure you have the right, it's not too heavy, not too loose. And I'm I'm used to eyeing up these these lines here. And you've traced the line on there, is that with a pencil? Yes. Okay. And I'm doing it kind of fast here for demonstration, but mm -hmm. the um, there are three lines that you put on the egg, like an equator, a prime meridian, and then uh -huh. another, those are guidelines. And all of the designs come from those guidelines. So you, uh, you you put the wax on, you dye it, then you put more wax on, then you dye it some more. Eventually, you have a lot of wax on there. How do you get that wax off? You, I scrape it off a little, very gently, because yeah. this egg is done. It's it's not blown out. Okay. Um, so it's it's still pretty easy to handle. I'll scrape it off with a knife, mm -hmm. and then I will heat it up next to a candle, and then wipe it off. And then the last, um, I'll put some sort of a a benzene or maybe a rubber cement thinner just to, to, get, the to get the rest off. At that point, you polyurethane the whole thing uh -huh. and uh, several layers so it's nice and shiny uh, like this. And then you blow, you tap, tap a hole in each end and blow out the egg. And that's when you get rid of the inside of the egg. Exactly right. So Can you I want try this? Sure. I, I'm dying. I'm sorry. I'll watch to do this. I have so, to try it. So get that uh, little. Which one? That one right there. This one This, here? this yeah. right there. So here I'll give you an egg. It has the design. It has the the, the three lines, the guidelines okay. on it. Perfect. So you can kind of just go from there. Okay. And I'm going to heat this up for you All a right. little bit, and you'll you can use a napkin to make sure it's not bloppy okay. and try it on here. So okay. You've seen what I've done, so maybe you now can do I have to just heat on this the up? yeah. Hit. So heat it on the end. And the other side yeah, here? like that one on okay. each side. All right, and then I just wipe it off a little bit on the on the right. Thing. Does that look good? Maybe just a little bit longer, and try not to get the tip right directly uh, okay. in there. Yeah, I think it's good okay. now. So try it on the thing. All right. Pretty good. And Whoa. what you want to do, you can put it in your hand. Yeah. And you can almost rotate the the egg underneath the. Tool, uh, as opposed to drawing the yeah, tool. I You're getting it a little bit hot, so okay. here, hang on. Oop. You know, I, I know what you mean. Hold the stylus still. Right. And move you almost have to do this. Yeah.
So a lot of times I'll put those guidelines on there, but I don't go actually on the guideline. Yeah, I just use them as a... Now, my marks are not nearly as consistently uh, done like yours are. Uh, it varies. This is starting to smoke. Did it make it too hot? You know, I think, yeah, I think it's a little too hot. Yeah. You can always add oh, a little I... bit of more wax. Yeah. But that's that pretty good for a, for a first start. Yeah. First start. <laughs> Extreme. Oops. I just dropped it on the that's table. That's okay. Link. Extremely tedious. <laughs> well, it's fun if you if you think it's fun. So now that's a question I have. I mean, when we look at crafts like this, you look at it, and you go, "Wow, look at all that work! Look at all that tedious stuff! Look at all the detail!" And then the first thing you say is, "I could never do that." Now, what was it about you all those years ago, looking at something like that, saying, "Yeah, I'm going to give it a shot"? Well, it's really not that hard. Mm -hmm. I've, I like you said. You can, your line's a little bit crooked, but it's not that bad, you know. But um, it's really, uh, it's kind of fun, and I think a lot of people who are not good at crafts can can do this kind of thing because mm -hmm. you can make things fairly simple um, once you get used to the, the 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 lines. And you know, there's it's really hard to to uh, to not be thrilled by all these different dye beds, you yeah. know. <laughs> so I, I just figured. Um, you know, it was a craft that was pretty cheap, too. It's the cost of eggs and a couple of dyes, and that's simple, it. Simple tools, and look what you can make. With and you can tools. get all this stuff online now. Mm -hmm. If you just Google it, and back I'm in sure. the day, I had to find this stuff mm -hmm. uh, in Manhattan and in Minnesota, I think they have a lot of Ukrainian And now online, shops. all that stuff comes right to your door. Absolutely. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Well, thanks for the demonstration, and I have a little bit of a surprise for you. Oh. Uh, something handmade from me to you, and is coming in here quickly. Here it is. Oh. This is an egg tote. Oh my word! All handmade, oh. and there you go. Oh my word! Look at this. Oh, that is so cool. Thank you. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. I'm gonna put my glasses on and take a look. An egg tote? Well, that's what I'm calling it. Okay. <laughs> I had to make it relevant to what we're doing today, so that's what oh, I can Oh, that is so neat. Thank you. This is a American original. This is American chestnut from an old barn. It's reclaimed lumber. And these thinner pieces here, these dividers, are made from a tulip poplar that was from our house, which was built in 1872. Oh, and this word. handle here I made in a blacksmithing class that Jonina and I took a couple years ago. So it's all handmade. Wow. wow that is, thank you so much. That is beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Look at the bottom. Wow, that is really cool. So now you've got something to put your eggs in. <laughs> yeah. And these come out, by the way, so you can actually remove the dividers and use it for something more useful, like maybe a, a garden tool tray or something like that. Oh my gosh, that is so neat. Thank you so much, Ken. You're welcome, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, we had a great time here, Nina, thanks. You're welcome. And we made it back home to Pennsylvania. This was a fun change of pace for us. I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, next time is going to be the start of our new project. And if it's the project I'm thinking of, it's going to be quite a challenge for me. That's all I'm saying. So uh, until then, thanks for stopping by and see you next time. Wasn't that great?